If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. And we're back. Thank you so much for coming to visit us today on Spirit Guides. I am Kelly Sparta, your host, transformational shaman and spiritual business coach. And I am here as always with my best friend in Boquete de Panama, Catherine Lauren J, also an amazing spiritual coach and a business coach. And we are talking today about, ah, stop throwing money at me. We're we're stop about- it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> today, <laughs> ah, today is about fear of success. And so, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things over the course of time. But this one, I think, is probably the most prevalent of anything that I see. People will often mistake this one for a fear of failure because they will, they'll say, Oh, but you know, I'm just not, you know, I, I, I don't try blah, blah, blah. It's like, or, you know, I'm trying hard, but I can't get it to work. So therefore I must be afraid of, of, you know, but I keep trying, right. They'll, they'll mistake it. And, and it's not. So we'll talk about fear of failure next time on the align episode here on Wednesdays, but this time we're going to talk about fear of success because This one is the one that gets in the way and is so insidious because we're like, oh, but I'm trying, but I'm trying, but I'm trying. And, you know, sometimes people just don't try if they're afraid of success. They'll just be like, no, no. But those of us who are a little more spiritually aware and those of us who are a little more overachiever style, we will often try really, really hard work really, really hard and do a lot of things, but a lot of things that don't actually move the needle. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that because we know if we move the needle, then we actually succeed. And there's a lot of reasons why fear of success comes into play. Uh, You know, we've talked a little bit about my, the, about my struggle personally with being famous and how I was afraid of being famous And that, that to me came with a lot of restrictions on my freedom. And so, you know, in my head being famous meant, oh, I have to live behind a bunch of high walls with security guards to be, you know, to, because there, it comes with stalkers and all the terrible things that you hear about. Right. And, and I, you know, the universe, when I started addressing it, gave me many different opportunities to talk to famous people who were like, yeah, no, that's not what my life is like. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe I could do that then. Right. (laughs) So, so, you know, when we, when we start to address our fear of success, then we start to find the things that are actually in the way. And so, you know, I've got a bunch to say on this topic, but I've, I've, been talking for a few minutes straight, Catherine. So I'm going to let you talk for a few minutes and, uh, you know, give your sort of general overview and then we'll come back and talk specifics. Mm -hmm. So I fear success. I I was just like, so like listening to you, Kelly, that I'm like, Oh, like I should probably like organize my thoughts and my thoughts are organized. Like I have like more, like a little more kind of like specific kind of ways that it can show up. Or I was thinking more of kind of like the specific things that kind of like emerge for people. Um, Yeah. I think that it is closely tied to fear of failure And sometimes, you know, I think people can kind of pendulum almost back and forth with it. And there's this like waffling that happens. And, you know, I liked what you said about feeling like you're putting all the efforting in and I'm trying and I'm really working at this. And yet, and this is common, I find with entrepreneurs, regardless of if it's fear of success, fear of failure, you know, something else going on, that they feel like they're doing all the things, but they're not getting the results because they're kind of caught up in that trap of feeling like, right, I'm efforting, I'm efforting, I'm efforting, and not actually kind of taking a look at, well, are you doing the aligned actions? Are you actually doing the things that are going to get you traction and results in your business? And if you're not, then let's take a look at, okay, what's kind of getting in the way of that? And is it that fear of success, fear of failure or something else? Yeah. So when I look at fear of success, 
what I often see is that people have things associated with that success. So for instance, Kathy has told me a story before about a client who was, he would get just up to making a million dollars a year, but never actually go over the line. And he, he was talking and it came out that, you know, his mother hates rich people. And in his mind, a million dollars is rich. And so he couldn't go over the edge. And so the, the answer was, well, why don't you, instead of being, you know, instead of stopping yourself, why don't you just buy your mother a house with the money that you make when you go over a million dollars? He was like, oh my God, I could totally do that. And so that's what he did. And he burst through that million dollar mark with no problems and bought his mother her dream house. And she was like, look at my son. Isn't he amazing? And look how great he's doing. And he bought me this amazing house. Da, 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 da. So he was no longer the horrible rich person, right? He was the great son who bought his mother this amazing house. And so, you know, sometimes it's these, lim well, always it's these limiting beliefs that are in our way, right? And so, you know, sometimes there's this, there's this process in psychology that's called staying loyal to the rules of belonging. And so if you're someone who wants to go to college and no one in your family has ever gone to college, then to stay loyal to the rules of belonging, you know, you'll sabotage being able to go to college because nobody in our family goes to college. That's not what we do. If everybody is poor and you want to make a lot of money while well, staying loyal to the rules of belonging, will keep you poor, right? You have to find a different way to belong to your family or your friends or whatever, right? There's a reason why they say your income is the average of the 10 people you spend the most time with. And that's because we stay loyal to the rules of belonging. And so if you are actually making less and, and you're hanging out with people who make more, you will end up making more because you're going to be raised into that level just by the nature of the fact that you hang out with these people. And if you're hanging out with people who are all poor, you're going to end up staying poor, especially as an entrepreneur. I'm going to say, especially as an entrepreneur, because your belief structure in how much money people actually have will be severely limited if you're hanging out with a bunch of poor people, because that's, you, they're going to define for you how much money people have. You need to hang out with a bunch of rich people so that you can believe that people have money to pay for the services or the products that you're selling. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You look like you have some. Yeah. To say. Yeah. Well, and not, and not just the hanging out with poor people, but, but noticing like the people that you're surrounding yourself with, what are they talking about? Yeah. How do they describe, are they saying, I can't afford it. That's too expensive. You know, like there's lots of clues about people's perception around money. And today we're talking about, I mean, the title is stop throwing money at me and in business success generally looks like money right so that's why the the focus is a lot on money and yeah so starting to notice like how am i talking about it how am i thinking about it am i making an agreement with scarcity with lack there's not enough to go around uh do i have a belief that rich rich people are evil or bad or greedy or unethical right so or you know, if i if i have a lot. I'm taking it away from somebody who needs it more. Right? Yeah, that there's not way. enough. Yeah. yeah, not enough to go around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think another thing that you know can really get in the way for people is this idea or this concern about what are other people going to think about me, and that ties into that rules of belonging. So you know, are they going to think that I got it unethically, or that I'm a greedy person, or I'm like high on my horses, or I'm you know, whatever those perceptions are, but what are other people going to think about me? Another one is the then what, right? So if I achieve success, well, then what's left? So right. I know when I'm working towards this thing, this idea, but, and I, I had this conversation with a very wealthy investor and he works with people who have, you know, scads and scads and scads of money. And he said that that was the thing that he hears a lot is that people are so focused on getting the money, but then afterwards there's like no sense of purpose. There's right. so there can be a concern that they're not sure what's going to come, come next. I have a, I have a bunch here too, that I want to talk about, but I want to throw it back to you, Kelly. Oh no, keep going. I'll, okay, I'll I'll jump go. okay. Okay. Perfect. Another one is a belief that I don't deserve it, right? I'm not oh. worth it not enough. Yeah. I don't deserve okay. to be rich. I don't deserve to be successful. You know, that's okay for other people, but not for me. 
Yeah, and, I, I have to jump in on that one because yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you knew I was gonna. So I'm like yeah, seeing that. <laughs> she's like, ah, yeah. So this is my pet peeve. So if we accept that we are all infinitely creative beings, that we are the universe and the universe is us, the concept of deserving is gaslighting because it's, it doesn't exist. We are everything and everything is us. Deserving says you have to do something to earn the right to have something. And that is complete bullshit. <laughs> We deserving is a, an idea that was used to manipulate and control us or is used to manipulate and control us deserving and, you know, being worthy of and all of these things, a complete bullshit. It makes me crazy. So I just had to say that. <laughs> I had, I had such an interesting, this is kind of a little bit of an aside here, but I had in some timeline work that I did with one of my spiritual mentors, I, cause that was one of the ones that I had was I'm, you know, I'm fundamentally flawed. There's something wrong with me. I don't deserve it. And it was a, another mentor who shared that, like, actually most of the population feels that way. I was like, well, like, it's not just me. No, it's Judeo-Christian. Most, <laughs> most people feel that way. But in this, in this timeline work that I did, I actually went back to the point where my soul was kind of expressed from consciousness as an individual soul and then the point where it chose to come to earth and we were working with a particular emotion and I thought I knew where that one emotion came from but the perception and this was the human form of me the soul form knew the difference but the, the human form of me thought that I was cast out to earth right you're cast out to earth but it was this whole like shift in perception, this realization like, oh, I was actually ready. I was chosen to come. And it just flipped it right on that head that we are all infinite spiritual beings having this human experience and we deserve it by our birthright. Like if you are on this planet breathing, it means that you were chosen to come here. You chose to come here. You deserve it. So that one I think is a big one. Okay. Another one. And I talked about this a little bit is the idea that success equals money. And we all have these money stories about what it means and what it means to have money. And if money's for me or not for me, or it's my family or not, this idea that rich people are evil or bad or unethical, or they got it through nefarious means. One of the pieces of work that I give my clients to do, if that's one of their money blocks is to actually start to research and look for philanthropists who are exhibiting philanthropy in the areas that matter most to you. So looking for people who have lots of money and are doing good in the world that is in alignment with the kind of good that you want to do, right? Because the more money that you have, the more influence and impact, and the more you can influence and impact those things that matter to you. Right. And then I'm going to jump in here too, because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's, there's in addition to that, because yes, I agree. And absolutely. That's a great idea. I tell my clients, I'm like, look, okay, here's the deal. We need people who are psychologically well oiled machines, right? Like we are, we are healed. We are mm. healers. We need people who have spiritual approach to have power and money because yes, that's yes, how yes. things change. We yes. need that to happen. And so we all need to be wealthy in order for us to have the power and influence that we need to have in order to evolve the culture, because mm. especially the U S culture is based around power and money. That's what it's based around. It's like, okay, well then we need the currency to change that. And, and that's, it, I love that it's called currency because it's like an electrical current, Ooh, right? Yeah. Movement. Right? I love that. Movement. It's and energy. So, oh. Right. Yeah. And so on, on top of that, the other piece that I don't hear people talk about a lot is if you have a fear of managing large amounts of money, that was, my next, one. Was that was my really? next one. Was it really? Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you, if you feel like you're uneducated, you don't understand how money works, you don't understand how to manage mm -hmm. it, you don't know what you're going to do with it, then you will resist having it. And if it comes into being much like with lottery winners, the average lottery winner is broke again in five, five years. Bankrupt. Uh, bankrupt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if, 
if you don't know how to manage it, you'll get rid of it really quickly with mm -hmm. things that can't mm -hmm. be sold again, right? It's oftentimes that they they do it for things that they can't they can't resell or they can't get the value back out of it again, or they end up giving it away or loaning it or investing it in bad investments or whatever. And it just disappears because they don't know uh, how to manage it. Yeah. It's that, it's that self image that we've talked about before. Right. And Gay Hendricks talks about the upper limit is that we will, uh, you know, we, we have kind of a certain amount that we can hold happiness, love, joy, you know, passion, relationships, money. And if we reach that and we're not aware of consciously up leveling that we will, we'll like, ah, right. Get away with me. Get away with me. Stop throwing money at me. Ah. Um, yeah. So that was the one is, you know, there's a fear of like, well, if I have a lot of money, then there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And so not sure. just, I don't know how to handle the money, but I've got, you know, like more taxes and then I maybe have to hire people and I have to like figure out how to, what to do with it. And then people are relying on me. Or people uh, are going to try and take it from me or yes. try and steal from me, or I can't trust who wants to be friends with me anymore. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. All of the things. Right? Yeah. All my relatives are going to come out of the woodwork and right. Come yeah. creeping up my door. Yeah. Another one, another fear of success related to, to fear of success is being seen. Mm, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. So yeah. actually what does it mean to you to be seen? Yeah. Well, and for a lot of people in the spiritual world, being seen brings up memories of being killed for our gifts in past lives. It's mm. like we were burned at the stake. We were yeah. down to the witch. We were, you know, stone to death. Stone to death. Yeah. You yeah. know, whatever, <laughs> you know, the, the, whatever the, the death of the day was for people who had spiritual gifts. And mm -hmm. so all of that comes up and, and, you know, the, the, <laughs> the irony is that the, that one has a simple solution. The, the simple solution for that one is you just got to look at it and say, nobody gets out of this life alive. Got to die somehow. Right. So we're right? going out, <laughs> death and taxes, death and taxes. That's it. That's it. I had, I had a friend who years ago, she was trying to publish her website. She had all of the stuff up on it, but she just could not hit the publish button no matter what she did. And I was, I sat with her and I'm like, okay, what's going on? And she's like, ah. I was like, she's like, I was, I was killed for my gifts last time. I'm like, yeah, they hung you. They hung you badly. She's like, I know my neck is still giving me a hard time. And I'm like, yeah. I, and I, so I looked ahead and I said, okay, well, I said, I can't guarantee that you won't be killed for your gifts, but I can guarantee that it won't be by hanging. And she went, oh, I said, yeah, if, if it happens, there's, there's one timeline where you get shot. And she's like, oh, I could do that. And she hit publish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, fine, fine, right? Publish. No, it was yeah, bang, boom. it was done, right? Just done, done. Yeah, she just needed yeah. to know she wasn't going to get hung badly again. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's also being seen by your family and friends. Oh, yes. Oh my right? Gosh. The whole mm -hmm. family of origin thing. And then yeah. related to being seen is being judged. Right. So especially yes. in this day of social media, depending on what you're doing, you're, there's a requirement to, to put yourself out there. And what about the haters, right? Mm -hmm. Are people going to judge me? Are they going to, and I remember my first hater and I got, you know, it was like a notification that came in on a comment and I just, I was like, yes, woohoo. I was all excited. Right. And the, 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 the hater comment was about my eyelashes. Cause I, and at the level of fact, like my lash lady went a little <laughs> they were like caterpillars. So there was some validity to the comment, right? But, but what was most, what was the best part about it is I was like, wow, like I am so proud of the version of me from the past who chose to put herself out there, regardless of knowing that at some point in the future, this something like this was going to happen. Right. So, so that fear of, you know, being judged by, and it could be by strangers, again, could be family and friends. That's a big one. That's another one around being famous that I had to come up against too, was, you know, this thing that maybe somebody's going to try and come at my face and try and humiliate me and all of the other things. Right. And, you know, I just had to come to an understanding that it is, it's going to be what it's going to be. And, you know, I, I am who I am as transparently as possible. And so, you know, it is what it is. I, I have a TikTok channel where I talk a lot about having moved to 
Bocete because, you know, we did that move a couple of years ago and I was just getting my channel started at the time. And so I have a lot of followers and I talk about Bocete and, and the move and I've used the term expat, which I've been getting excoriated for. I mean, everybody's just coming at my face for the term expat. So I'm, I'm coming back on it, but, but, mm -hmm. you know, the, it's so interesting because the hater comments are about a third of the comments on anything that I put out there, even if I'm not putting out the, the term expat, right? And the what's funny is that TikTok works on engagement. And so the more hater comments I get, the more I get delivered to more people. And so I actually look at them and say, thanks for the engagement, right? Yeah. <laughs> I respond <laughs> to them because then they'll spin up even more and then I get more engagement. <laughs> I'm just like, thanks for the engagement. Thanks for the engagement, you know? And, yeah. and it's so funny, you know, I, it, and it, it's just, it's very interesting to see how people are and how the algorithms work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're on social media, the haters, I used to tell people step away from the troll. Like 20 years ago, when I was first doing this stuff, I would tell people, look, step away from the troll. The troll is not going to do you any good. There's no point in engaging. It's just going to make your life miserable. And they're just going to get off on like being mean to you. Right. Today, I'm like, poke the troll, poke the troll. <laughs> <laughs> they, they increase your engagement. Do it kindly, but poke the troll. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And knowing yeah. that, that, that troll, that hater, that comment has, has a literally nothing to do with you. It's right. this is nothing to do. It's nothing about, it's just, this is how this person is choosing to show up in the world. Right. That is about them. And, you know, for me, originally the fear was, you know, everybody's going to hate me. Right. Mm -hmm. That was 20 years ago. It was everybody. I gonna still, hate me. I love you, Kelly. I love you too, baby. <laughs> now I don't need people to love me, right? Yeah. Now, 20 years later, I've done a huge amount of internal work. Now it's more about, oh, I don't want the drama, right? It's just mm -hmm. like, I have no patience for drama these days. And so I'm like, uh, well, you know, if things go wild, I'll just go on vacation. It, you know, they'll forget me in a, in a week yeah. or two, you know, yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it's, it's one of those things where the, the ugh changes mm -hmm. <laughs> or disappears depending upon where you're at. Yeah. Right. And so for yeah. me, the ugh factor is just like, mm, I'll just take a vacation for a couple of weeks. If yeah. somebody decides to go nuts and make some stuff up about me, because they would have to do that. Right. It would yeah. have to be made up because I just don't really have anything for people to go wild about. So, you know, and the things some people come to go wild about, I'd just be like, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. And the drama is only drama if you engage with it. Right. Yeah, so if you let yourself get hooked yeah. into it, then it becomes drama in your life. But it's like, right. meh, yeah. meh. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Say what you want. Knock yourselves yeah. out. Have a good time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to go binge some Netflix. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll watch drama. I enjoy. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. So you've got more on your list. I know you do. Well, I do. Some of them we've kind of talked about. I just want to cover them off just to make sure. And we, you talked about this with the belonging with family and friends, that there's a fear that you're no longer going to fit in with them. Right. And that or, the, yeah. Yeah. Or that they will judge you or, you know, what are they going to think about me? They're going to think that I think that I'm better than them or that they're not as good. So there can be some of that stuff going on where you kind of like hold yourself back. And then I wanted to talk about the, the, the kind of money in money out that you talked about as well, right? Is that that's that upper limit where when we start to experience successes that are greater than what we've done before, it doesn't fit with our energy field. It doesn't fit yet. It doesn't fit yet with our upper limit. And so we'll, we'll maybe notice that, oh, I've got like greater income coming in, but now I've got these unexpected bills. Right. There's like, a, I got car a flat breaks down. Yep. Yeah, car breaks down, you know, something happens and your, your actual level of kind of like livable income is staying at a, about the same. So yep. there's some work to do to up level your capacity to hold that. So that is actually coming in. And if you've been used to living paycheck to paycheck or client to client, when that money starts to come in, you're not going to know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that 
that I personally have been working on in my business is looking at, okay, so what do I, when the business comes flooding in, you know, yeah. what do I need to do? What's the first hire I need to make? Where am I going to store the funds? Because once you get over 250,000 in a specific bank, there's non insurance on it. And you know, what do you do and blah, blah, blah. How do you manage it? Where do you put it? You know, because inflation, blah, blah, blah. How do you keep up with inflation? All the things. Right. And so, you know, I've been doing the research on, on that. And it's not like I'm not doing well now I am, but getting it to go even, you know, like exponentially higher which is what we're in the middle of right now. And this launch is part of that is, you know, what do we, you know, how am I going to manage the flow? And, you know, I've just transitioned all of my accounts to a new backend system so that it can flow more easily so that things can move more smoothly and work easier and faster and more efficiently and all the things. And so, you know, planning taking that inspired action, right. For what it is that's coming next is one of those pieces and knowing what you're going to do with the funds, with the extra business, with the, you know, so you're not caught flat footed, right. Mm -hmm. Trying to, Mm -hmm. trying to catch up, trying to run to catch up. So, you know, now it's very easy to stress yourself out on that. So I'm going to say, don't do that. I have been doing it as easily as possible. Mm -hmm. I have been, you know, this transition has, I don't know about you, Catherine, but for the last two and a half months, you know, and, and just for the record, we're recording this May 20th. So it's not going to come out till mid June, but we're recording it on 20th of May. So we've just come out of the two month long eclipse and Mercury retrograde cycle. And we're just coming into the June 3rd planetary alignment cycle. And we've got crazy solar solar flares. flares. Yeah. Yeah. And so all of this stuff, everybody I know who is spiritually oriented has been like laid flat. They're just like, I can't, I feel like I got hit by a truck. And that's what's been happening for the last like week and week or two. And, you know, the time before that has been like this massive up level. So we're just like all holding on, waiting for the, right, for the end of the Rocking cycle. back and forth. Back and forth Where's my teddy bear? bear. Oh, I give. I Why give. won't my puppy cuddle me? <laughs> yes. Like, ah, right. And, so, <laughs> and everything has been moving so slow. Like you can't get anything uh, done. It is it is literally in slow motion. <laughs> I I went to update my book. I wanted to shorten the title and change out some some names of programs because I rebranded last year and change out some some links. That was it. That was all I was doing. Two and a half freaking months later, and it's still not published because I finally I thought I had finally gotten all the edits done. No, no, they're done, but then it wouldn't upload to Kindle. And so I'm just like, I don't understand. I don't, you know, but this, I literally had to hand it to my assistant because I was like, I'm just going to not do this because I'm done. Right. And I looked at her, I was like, you need to, you need to take this from here because I just can't, I can't deal with it anymore. And so the, you know, this has been going on with pretty much everything. We, this transition to the new platform was supposed to get done in a month. We started in February. It's still not complete. It's mid-May, right? And, I, but, you know, it's, it's like, okay, I could stress myself out or I could just accept that the pace of things is the pace of things. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So the pace of things is the pace of things and that's fine. So there's a certain amount where you have to really manage your stress levels, even as you're planning for the move up, right? Right? It's like, you're taking your inspired action, but if the universe is just slogging and there's a law of divine timing, right? There's a universal law. It's just slogging timing. Stuff is slogging and everything is slogging. And if it was just me, I would be questioning whether or not this was the right thing to be doing at this point, but it's Mm -hmm. not just me. And it's not just one thing. It's everything and everyone I talk to. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, so the universe is just slowed and that's okay. We're just going to slow with it. We need to, I, you know, honestly, what's very interesting is that 2012, was the end of the Mayan calendar 
and the beginning of the new, they, they didn't have it there, but you know, the buying calendar is always renewing and we know that the world didn't end. So the, the, the premise that came out years later after all the Mayan calendar insanity happened was that the time speeds up the closer you get to the end of the calendar. And then it starts to slow down again as you get further away. We are now 12 years out from this, the, the, the height of the speed. And this may be the universe just trying to slow us down so that we're not running at the infinite speed that we were running at. The idea you know, was that the closer you were to 2012, the more lifetimes you lived in a single life. And so it's just trying to slow us down to have come back to having a single life in a lifetime or, you know, maybe, maybe four or five, right. You know, we were living mm. 15 or 20 before, maybe we can get down to four or five. Right. And, mm. and you know, start to, to uh, stop the insanity as the chick from the nineties was really fond of saying, I don't even remember her name, but she had blonde hair. Anyway, the, the point is that there is a divine timing as you were talking about. And as we're going through this process of really, and again, this is an identity up level that we're talking about, right? This mm -hmm. is us looking at it and saying, okay, so when we are planning our up level, we need to be able to both manage our current life and adjust the new one. And mm -hmm. that means scaling way back on what we're doing. Cause for most of us, we're doing way too much to begin with, right? Let's be honest. It means scaling way back on what we're doing and allowing ourselves space to make the transition. And sometimes that space is do nothing space. My husband and I literally did nothing except go out for his birthday dinner. Well, our birthday dinner, since mine got canceled because of protests in November, but we went out to our birthday dinner on Saturday night. The rest of Saturday and Sunday was spent doing nothing, but sitting in front of the television and watching Star Trek Deep Space Nine, <laughs> because that was all we had the energy for. We, we yeah. ate our meals in front of that. We just, we binged like four seasons over the course of two and a half days and we were just like nice. yeah, okay nice. because that was just all we had bandwidth for and so sometimes you just take the time you know yeah. it's like and and i i thought oh well i could be doing this while i'm like no 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 no, no. i did not have the bandwidth for doing this while i was doing that that just was not going to happen i had to just do what i was doing and if i needed to do something else too i played my game on my phone <laughs> that was it you know so no email, no, oh, I can just do this mindless thing. No, 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 none of that. No, nope, we're, we're going to, we're going to just be so. All right. So Catherine, you have anything else that you want to add before we, okay. So Catherine's got somebody at her door. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up this episode because that's what I was about to go into anyway. So we're going to say this, if you're afraid of success and you're going, ah, I don't know what to do, then the answer to that is simply to step into the, the identity that you would be at, uh, you know, if you were already successful and to really wrap your head around who that is and how to be that person. So become the person who's already successful and you will cease being afraid to be successful. And that is your thought for the day. So with that, I'm just going to say, remember that what you focus on is what, what you see and what you intend is what you create. And that's so choose wisely. And that's it for this week. We will see you next week on Spirit Guides. I'm Kelly Sparta here with Catherine Laranger, and you have been listening to Spirit Guides. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show